Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I hope to fulfill this Jupiter probe mission. I've decided not to go ahead with the with the manned or crewed landing on the moon just yet, so we'll retry that mission uh, next time. Uh, this time, I am going to try and get a win under my belt by doing this mission with all of its solar panelry. Uh, and it's a quite long trip out to Jupiter. We've got this uh, mid-course adjustment plotted, so we've got that going for us, and that will occur there, and then we'll meet up with Jupiter in uh, a little over two years, is the plan. So a lot can happen in that time. I think it'll be a relatively quick episode, but who knows. Uh, right now, we'll double check that we are trained on Kerbin slash Earth, and everything else looks nominal. We definitely have enough Delta V for the mid-course adjustment. So let's hop to it, and that's in 257 days. Now you'll note that we already have a 38 second delay, so I'm going to have to remember that I have a delay, but I also have to remember that certain things are not going to be delayed, so... Wonderful. Uh, we do have to do the Duna mission. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll wait till after this. So we'll, we'll, let me queue up uh, another transfer to Mars. Okay, uh, delete that one. Something weird has happened. Uh, okay, well, alright, we'll wait on that. Okay, well, uh, Smart ASS, why don't you know me? Now you go, well, why don't I just use Flight Computer because that will obey the delay time. And the reason is when I try and get Flight Computer to aim at the node, it doesn't. It uh, wiggles around in a circle around the node and it never settles down. So that's why. I wouldn't mind obeying the delay if it would actually eventually get to the node at some point, but it doesn't. So I can't waste my effort on that. I will waste the fuel on the minor wiggling that Smart ASS does. Okay, well, uh, we don't meet, need to be uber precise about this. Uh, in fact, I wasn't planning on it. Uh, let's see, I, I'm just gonna throttle up. And throttle works, so. So much for the signal delay. But we'll have to, when we send uh, science back, that will be on the delay, so. Okay, getting ready to shut down. This engine does throttle. Okay, I think that's the that's the maneuver as prescribed. Now, gonna do some RCS bursts to try and I know I'll, I'll do I'll make a new maneuver to try and get it to one of the moons of Jupiter. We'll see. All right, that'll take some time. Okay, well it looks like a 6.0 meter per second burn in 11 hours will get us a Europa encounter and a pretty close one at that 67 kilometers it looks like if I do this particular set but you'll note uh, we're down to a hundredth of a meter per second in accuracy so that's going to be a little bit tricky uh, it'll have to be done with RCS obviously and we'll try and get done it on time but there's no telling if I can and of course once I get into the sphere of influence of Jupiter it'll probably mess up anyway. Uh, we've got 390 kilometers. Well that's definitely as close as I care to get it right now since it's probably gonna change once we enter Jupiter SOI. Now another consideration is we would like to face the Sun with our solar panels. Right now we're just barely breaking even on energy so I'm going to caps lock this. Ah oh, darn. Uh, just my little turning has caused my periapsis at Europa to go to 2,000 kilometers. Okay, well if we want to get closer than that we'll probably have to wait until we get there. Okay, how is this little panel situation? Well, they're all facing and it's about 2.5 times what we need uh, when we're not time warping though uh, it's just all going awry there well at least we have a Europa encounter 
And once we are time warping, it's four times what we need. Hopefully that'll hold out. We've still got a ways to go. Okay, we've got drain again. Well, something's not getting calculated right in fuse box. Okay, well that should be as good as we can get it, and yes, we're recharging again. But this is just gonna get more and more troublesome. Looks like we need more than 0.48 rather than 0.25. Okay, we have successfully made it into Jule SOI. Unfortunately, all of my maneuvering in order to get to, um, what you got, uh, balance in my electric charge situation has led me to lose my Europa encounter. So let me try and regain it, but that's going to be tricky business. Oops, that's not going to work right. Well, I'm pretty flat with respect to the system. I don't really see what I can do about my approach in terms of the inclination. Well, okay, well, we've got an IO encounter there. There was a time when there was a Ganymede one. There's a Ganymede one. Well, this is an interesting question. Do we want to go to Ganymede, or do we want to go to IO? I think uh, the closer approach to Jewel is probably more interesting, so I'll go for IO. Now, it is past periapsis either way. So that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Hmm. Because we really want to burn for orbit here. Well, it looks like uh, burning for orbit doesn't change the fact that we get a IO encounter. It would probably change the fact that we get a Ganymede encounter, besides the fact that it would cost quite a lot. Okay, so that's the limit of that. Can we angle it in such a way as to maximize our IO encounter instead of just being borderline about it? So here we're tossing in a radial burn in order to get closer to IO at the same time as we burn for orbit around Jupiter. As much as we can. I think 1,300 kilometers is all we can do. Uh, maybe some inclination adjustments is possible. Just to push the... Oh! That pushes the descending node into it. It actually increases our our inclination. But then we end up on a crash course with IO. So we could get pretty close to IO. But it leaves us with a little bit more inclination. Right now it's a 88 kilometer pass over IO. So that's very good. And we still get into orbit. Okay, we'll do this. So 50.4 as the first correction and then the orbital adjustment when we get to periapsis. Now it's turning to the other maneuver node. Though things have obviously substantially changed. Let's take a closer look at our approach to IO. So I'm going to be using my orbital adjustment to bring the orbit down from up there to down here. And I want to try and get level with IO so that it doesn't change my inclination too much. Right now our relative inclination is 2.4 degrees. I can't really see what the inclination is going to be going out. It doesn't show me. Well, now it does. Uh, 2.6, well, that's not too bad. Guess that'll be alright. Or 1.9, hold on. I think uh, if we get closer to IO, we can do more. There's probably such a thing as too close, though. 100 kilometers, and we get to 1.8 degrees. Okay, so that'll be our orbital burn to Jupiter bringing us into a decent orbit. It's a 92 day to apoapsis. Uh, oh, uh, so, um, well, with periapsis 75 days. 92 days, so 17 days. At, so it's a 34 day orbit, I think. All right. 
Um, right, uh, we'll, we'll keep this battery locked and then we'll head in. I think we only have one goo container. We'll do that around IO, obviously. Otherwise, it's just uh, the probe core's own thing. Oh, we've got a thermometer on one side and a barometer on the other side. This is uh, about the distance that Voyager approached Jupiter. Uh, both, I think, both Voyagers. I uh, forget. I think. I forget if I remember the number from Voyager 1 or Voyager 2. Alright, well, I'll sell the fuel down, I guess. No connection? The Hoosie, what's it? Uh, maybe if I unlock this battery. Please? Yay, okay, connection. Probably as a penalty, I should time warp for 30, uh, what is it now? Almost 40 minutes? How badly would that mess up everything? Pretty badly, because we've only got uh, the encounters in three hours. Let's just do this thing. I should have uh, unlocked the battery a, an hour ahead of time, I guess, at least. Okay, so I'm fuel down. And ignition. Okay, I've told the, the upper probe's antennae to activate. But uh, this, unfortunately, is controlled by the time delay, so it'll take 36 minutes for them to do so. I think I accidentally activated one of them twice. Uh, I'm just taking a look to see if there's anything else that it will delay. Uh, once we get to Io, I'll see whether we should try and make orbit around Io using the probe. Let's see, um, let's... Uh oh. No, 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 why did you, no? What? Focus on what you were doing. Man. We have this maneuver plotted. I was adding a maneuver. Why Why did it do something else? Hold on. Um. I'll just manually do this now, I guess. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it right, because I, I, I've i lost my maneuver somehow. Even though this says I still have that node. I guess I'll just point in this vague direction and hope. So much for my carefully plied maneuver again. Jeez. Just trying to plot a maneuver in IO to see how much it would take to get into orbit around Io, but they just don't like you doing such things like that. But we'll forget. I don't have an SAS on because it takes 36 minutes to activate it. Well, uh, hmm, which way will increase my periapsis? That that way, that way. Not too much, just to be safe. Just to be safe. Okay, I'm gonna shut down there. Alright, uh, we've got 2.9 degrees on our ultimate inclination. Not what I wanted, but it's basically the same as what we've got right now in relation to the rest of the system. So I'll take it. And uh, our approach to Io is at 111 kilometers. So that's good. Okay. Jupiter. Let's do some science. While wow, we still can. Probe situation report. That'll take 36 minutes. Oh, th uh, yeah, 36 minutes. While that's happening, let me try and orient to the sun. Uh, it's close to as good as we're gonna get it. Looks like we were basically 0 0.02 less than we wanted. Could probably disable something, maybe? 
these guys aren't really necessary, but they don't take much charge anyway. And 0.48 seems to be what we need when we're time warping. So, yeah, uh, for instance, uh, you can see 0.03 charge strain right now. So that means we needed to generate more, 0.03 more. So 0.49, let's say. I'm going to send some charge up to the probe core. And then I'll lock the surveyor core. Okay, probe situation report in space high over Jupiter, really. Okay, we can transmit this 27 signs. I guess while we're here, high over Jupiter, I'll do the thermometer. I don't know if the barometer will do any good. But let's queue them up anyway. And again, the the goo container is for IO. Let me check that our, our IO encounter is going to be longer than, well, we might have to queue the IO science up before we enter IO sphere of influence. Unless we contrive to make orbit. How much would orbit take? Quite a lot, I know. And there you have it. It would take 8,000 meters per second to make orbit around Io. 8,000. So we're not going to be doing that. We'll be reserving fuel to perhaps bump into some of the other moons of Jupiter. We've hit the innermost one. We are in this uh, high orbit here, higher than I intended. And uh, we will try and get to other moons of Jupiter using this orbit. We don't have anything else pending, so that's good. Uh, well, some of these might actually expire. That's probably a problem, but I think this is important. I can't see how much fun how many funds we have. Okay, yeah, we'll assume that this is the important thing to do and proceed. Okay, uh, wait till those experiments happen. Okay, 48 signs for the temperature scan. And the uh, barometer scan can't be done right now. Okay, into Iosphere of Influence. Well, not quite. I'll, uh, I'll queue up the, the experiments a little bit ahead of that. Okay, given the signal delay, we should be in Iosphere influence when the experiments happen now. I'll, uh, maybe a little bit closer just to make sure that we're nice and tight around Io. Um, yeah, we should be very close to Io when the experiments happen here. So, observe Mystery Goo. Is that queued up? Yep. And probe situation report, let's not forget. Okay. All queued up. So there's Io. Getting nice and close, but I think we'll be a little bit past our periapsis when these things happen. Yeah, I wonder what that red spot is. Okay, up we go again. We, uh, we sort of hit our periapsis right over that red spot. Good, completely unintentional coincidence. Probably some of these other spots are even more interesting. Who knows? Well, yeah, then time it as well as I should have. I should have made sure that we were 37 minutes away from periapsis when I queued those so that we could get them right at the low spot. But this will do. We don't get extra points apparently for making it at the. Well, we could could have done near over IO, but we don't even have high over IO yet. So, okay, goo twenty six points for transmitting. We could have gotten a hundred if we could retrieve it, but we're away from that yet. Temperature scan sixty four. And barometer scan is not something we're doing, but we've got the probe situation report. And that's 36. 
So much science done. Okay, well, uh, we're here. So let's see if we can hit another moon of Jupiter. So I'll take some time to try and finagle that, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, looks like we can get a Europa encounter in 310 days, 90 kilometers. We are doing the adjustment at this. This is the ascending node with respect to Europa, and it'll cost us 342 meters per second, which is well within our budget. Um, we will be locking the. Well, we'll keep the. Well, yeah, we'll keep the electric charge in there locked. And I don't know if I want to lock both of them. Probably not. Huh. Now it says it'll take 22,000 meters per second to do that. Suspect it's wrong. Hmm, I sense great inaccuracy with this one. Yeah, this is totally different from what it was before. This sucks. Wonder why I pretend... Okay, something about the moons of Jupiter. I found that they pretend to have encounters when they don't actually have encounters. This is so weird. There was totally an encounter there, and now it's... I mean, I know I time warped through the SOI change, but this is huge gap. Well, that would cost a lot, but I can see that there's an encounter. Hmm. We have that kind of fuel. Okay, well, I'm for that. That'll be a, a tighter orbit around Jupiter afterwards, so that's positive. And relatively flatter, I think. Okay, so let's quickly do this. So I gotta use most of the fuel from this stage. Oh, I think uh, Jupiter is eclipsing the sun, is it? Yeah. Okay, I'll... Uh, I'm gonna reserve the electric charge on this stage as well. And then time warp. Let me add the alarm because it's 304 days. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna unlock the battery. And we have communication. I'll ta tell uh, Smart ASS to point to the node. And Ganymede's a pretty big target, so I, I hope we don't at all miss it. So, some forward thrust and ignition. Okay, I've had to put caps lock on because it's using too much fuel to just wiggle about. Gonna throttle down here. So you can see we're pretty much gonna expend this stage making this burn. And then we still got fuel in this capsule over here if we want to hit some of the other moons of Jupiter, which is likely. But maybe I won't be getting to that in this episode. It's bringing in our, our orbit nicely, so that's good. But we can't get too close. 135 kilometers sounds fine. Okay, and that'll give us, uh, well, let's see, three days there, a uh, 72 day orbit compared to the one year orbital period we have right now. Okay, let's go in, and I'll lock this battery again, though I think at this point, this stage is done for. I mean, not done for, we still need its communication dish. Yeah, we'll need it to relay stuff back home, so we do actually have to make sure that it survives at least, uh, even if it can't do any more maneuvering. Come to think of it, we need to use that 6 meters per second to make sure it turns towards the sun at least. And how long are we going to be in Ganymede's SOI? Looks like an hour, so we can we can queue up the science while we're in there. We're a bit closer than I intended. 
Okay. Oh, we were a lot closer than I intended. Hmm. All right. Well, this this is a bit of a conundrum. I'm going to lock the fuel here and actually use the upper probe's fuel in order to make the correction. Oh, I have to also unlock some power, huh? Once I do this, I'll separate the two portions. This will I'll just orient this towards the sun and then we'll continue with the probe. Since the only science on the lower portion was the goo container and that's already spent. Well, I'm gonna leave it a pretty darn close pass at Ganymede. I guess 50 kilometers will be safe, maybe? It's not like it has an atmosphere or anything. I don't know, well, does it say what the highest point on it is? No. Looks like there's a gap there. So how much would it take to get into orbit around it? Just out of curiosity. Okay, uh, a mere 5,600 or so. Yep. Tough times getting into orbit around Jupiter's moons. Okay, I'm going to separate off the two now. Let's hope, uh, well, let me unlock this battery. Okay, everything should be safe. Yeah, press space bar, but that's gonna take, ah, uh, that's gonna, that is controlled by this. So I, I have to remember staging is like that. And a delay is looking like uh, 50, uh, 47 minutes instead of just 37 minutes. So I should queue up the science now. And barometer is useless, but I'll queue it anyway. Okay. So here we go. We'll see what happens. Oh, okay, we've got actually, uh, it's a blind spot here. But uh, we didn't crash into Ganymede at least. Skimming the surface at 50 kilometers and going back up again. Once again, I didn't hit periapsis, but I was occupied by trying to get away from Ganymede. Nobody told you to ignite anything? What was that sound? Hmm. Ganymede and Jupiter. Okay, now we should have a staging. Okay, hopefully the no connection is just because we are in the blind spot and Earth is on the opposite side of Ganymede. This has power for now. Tiny bit of fuel so that uh, we can reorient to the sun once we know where the sun is. Um, okay, uh, well, we've got probe situation report from the other portion. Oh, no. Uh, well, we can't transmit data. Oh, okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hang on to these. We'll, we'll have to do another probe situation report, huh? but I can't tell it to do that yet. Oh, uh, no, it's got the review situation report thing. Okay, so we'll have to wait until we get some communication. We've got power here. Uh, let's see, what is the line of sight situation? Uh, it's not long. We will be out of the shadow soon. And... Hopefully around here? Yeah. Okay, good. Let me just make sure, let's review that situation report and transmit that. Oh, that takes 47 minutes. Okay, well, let's transmit this one, the temperature scan, so that we get that science. Target the moon. I have no idea why we are targeting the moon, but okay. So, we, we will get that science. This portion, let's let's make sure it's pointed at the sun. It's pretty pretty close. According to it, it is uh, good on the charge. Let's see if it recharges itself or if it's... Yeah, it's got a heavy drain. Uh, this isn't counting the antenna, I think, is the problem. So it's eventually gonna lose out. 
Well, next time we do one of these, we'll have to make sure that that's fixed. That we have enough. This, on the other hand, uh, was never really meant to do anything too much. Let's face the sun, though. I think it's basically done its job. So I guess we're not going to hit another moon. 345... Okay, uh, fine controls. Uh, 345 meters per second, 343 now. Isn't going to be enough to do much. Oh, wait. This tank is locked. Oh, 3,000. Well, well, why didn't you say so? 3,000 meters per second is a different cup of tea altogether. Okay, well... I'll deal with this. Let's let's get that situation report, and then I'll deal with this further in the next episode. Well, why am I toggling RCS? Whatever. What? Oh, no connection. Ah, oh, come on. Why no connection? Oh, we're pretty far out now. But why no connection? Where's the other guy? Oh, that. Hmm. Well, I can't. Uh, let me switch to the other one. I'll have to review the situation report again. No connection. It's got charge still. Now it has connection. So now that I reminded it has connection, can I um, can't go back here? Oh, maybe it's active vessel. It's an active vex vessel situation. Yeah, I need to tell the antenna around Earth to focus. No, no, this has connection. Okay, wait. Cancel all that. But now I have to review probe situation report again and wait the time but we only have a day to use this 3000 meters per second well I'm transmitting that science I don't see how we can hit something else in a day with this 3000 meters per second too bad it's not enough to get into orbit around Gan uh, it wasn't enough to get in into orbit around Ganymede we need 5600 for that I think that's what I was intending to do. I was tr intending to use this to get into orbit around one of the moons, but it's clearly not enough for that. Okay, I think this this really is done for because the electric. Well, hold on. While we're time warping, it's electrically balanced. It's actually recharging, so it isn't done for. We can time warp and get to a different moon. Okay, I'll try and remember to do that next time. But I'll, I think I also have in mind the the crewed mission to the moon so I'll see what I do about that alright so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time